You are exalted above other names. Hallelujah. There is none like you. Hello, a very good day to you. My name is Sister Temi Tayo. I'm a Christian content creator and I'm here once again to share from the Open Heavens daily devotional that is compiled by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. And the reason I'm sharing from this particular Christian book is because the Lord instructed me to do so as I prepare to enter into the year 2020. So this is my fifth year. Of sharing from the devotional and that's why we call it season five and all those videos from 2020 they are all loaded on my youtube channel my handle on youtube is temi Ageda, which is right on the screen i will encourage you to visit my channel not only to view the old open heavens videos which are a great study guide but most importantly to view the open heavens for the current day and i know that will bless you exceedingly and very important while you're on my youtube channel Please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. And God bless you as you do now, Pastor Adeboye led me to Christ. In October 1997, a few years back when I was in the University of Lagos, Nigeria, in West Africa, and Daddy will give you a few scriptures from the Bible and a memory verse, and that helps you to understand the body of the text. Praise God. Let's go straight into the daily devotional today. It's Saturday, October the 12th. Saturday, October the 12th. And I'm sure you're having a great start to the weekend. Praise God. Saturday, October the 12th. And the title of today's daily devotional is very interesting. It says, Be Merciful. Be Merciful. That's the title of today's Open Heavens. And we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 35. Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 35 and i'm going to be reading from the traditional king james version and thus goes the reading of god's word matthew 18 21 to 35 just 20 from verse 21 to the end of the the chapter then came peter to him and said lord how oft shall my brother sin against me and i forgive him till seven times and Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of God likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he came, and when he began to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him ten thousand talents. But for as much as for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payments to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him saying, Lord, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants which owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the truth saying, pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, I will pay thee all. But And he will not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wrought and delivered him unto the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. Praise God and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us praise the lord so this is a a parable it's an earthly story that has a heavenly meaning praise god and jesus our lord is the one who told this parable he told um so peter was asking jesus christ how often should i forgive my brother you know like somebody in your life my brother 
he sins against you today, tomorrow, next tomorrow, the same sin, everything, he just continues to sin against you. So Peter is saying, shall I forgive him seven times? <laughs> and Jesus Christ said, no, 70 times, seven times. That's 490 times. And for you to be counting, you must be a very wicked person. <laughs> so God is saying that um, if somebody sins against us, you must forgive him. If he continues to sin, you must continue to forgive him up to 490 times. 70 times, seven times. And then Jesus Christ then gave a parable of an unforgiving servant. So this, this servant owed his master 10,000 talents, 10,000 talents. And his master called him to come and pay his debt and he could not pay. So the master instructed that they should take the man, his wife, his children and send them to and sell everything that he has to cover the debt that he owed. The man begged, he said, he said to his master, please have mercy on me. Give me time, please, sir, please, you know, and. The master looked at him, had compassion on him, and then just even give him time, forgive him everything. He, he wrote off that debt. Now, this same servant went out and found a fellow servant that owed him 100 pence. You know, while he owed his master 10,000 talents, this man, this is other fellow servant, asked, owed him 100 pence. And he, he grabbed the guy and said, you must pay me the money you owe me. The guy said, please. Please, please, just give me time. He said, no, my 100 pence, you must pay it. Now, if you cannot pay today, straight up, he took him to prison. And when other servants saw what had happened, they went back and told their Lord what had happened. I see the man you forgive, oh, he refused to see what he has done to a fellow servant. And the, the master said, called him a wicked servant. Then his Lord, after that he had called unto him, said, oh, thou wicked servant. So, if we do not forgive others um, their sins against us, God is calling us wicked. He said, I forgive thee all that debt because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant? So, you know, he was delivered to the tormentors. So now this is a, a, a parable. You know, it says the earthly story that has a heavenly meaning. All of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God and God forgive us all our trespasses. He did not deal with us after our sins and he did not punish us after our iniquity. He washed away all our sins with the blood of Jesus Christ. So now, um, Jesus Christ our Lord said offense shall come. So you see this being merciful is, is going towards offense and forgiveness. He, he said offense will come and um, maybe we should read the text. Let, let's let's read the text <laughs> praise god be merciful be merciful be merciful and the memory verse is matthew 5 7 matthew chapter 5 verse 7 and it says blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy jesus christ our lord said forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us we have offended people and people will also offend us that is that many people ask God for mercy, but when God looks into their life and sees that they don't show mercy to others around them, he withholds his mercy. From our memory verse today, you will realize that if you are merciful to others, you will also enjoy God's mercy. Now, Psalm 130 verse 3, Psalm 130 verse 3, it says that if God were to count our iniquities, we would not stand. It's only by his mercy that we are still alive. And if we are wise, we will also have mercy on those our, uh, who are around us now psalm 130 is a very beautiful verse it, it says that oh lord if you should mark iniquities who i would who will stand the bible then says that but there's forgiveness with god that he may be feared so that is saying that sometimes when god wants to show some people mercy when he looks into their lives he sees that they are not merciful people he withholds his mercy and that scripture says if god should mark iniquities who will stand who is standing? If God should mark iniquities, who will stand? If God should, the Bible says God does not deal with us after our sins and he does not punish us according to our iniquity. The Bible says as the father pitied his children, so the Lord pities those who serve him. You understand? So um, God is saying that we should be merciful. And just Christ said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. You know, our offenses can be, <laughs> they can come in different sizes, you know. But God is saying that we must forgive. And forgiveness, um, you know, somebody has done something little to you, you know, it's very easy to forgive. But when the Bible says that a brother offended is harder to win than a strong city, you know. So 
um, you know, we, we have to forgive. We have to be merciful. You know, we have to, be, by the power of the Holy Spirit, and that's why we need the Holy Spirit. I, I remember, um, I think it was Tiffany Montgomery. She actually, um, there was, uh, she did a fast, a three-day fast on forgiveness, on the grace to forgive. You understand, to forgive those who trust. Because if you don't forgive, if you don't show mercy, it will affect your prayers, it will affect your spirit. Now, when somebody, I just wanted to put this true that you see, you can grant some people forgiveness but deny access. If that person is very a bad person, you must forgive the person in the name of Jesus Christ. And you must deal with it until when you see that person, you you you, you do not bitterness does not stir up in your heart. Okay. But the fact that you are forgiving them doesn't mean that you have granted access, granted them access back into your life. You are forgiving them, you have released them into the freedom of your forgiveness. You have released them in the name of Jesus Christ. You are forgiving them. So when you see them, you, you don't lose your appetite. You do not go turn red or green. You know, you don't lose, you, you don't go crazy. They don't, you're not moved. In fact, when you see them, you just laugh because you learned a lesson. But that doesn't mean that that person should, you know, you can forgive them and let them back into your lives. Of course, husband and wives must learn to forgive. <laughs> Praise God. In our Bible reading for today, Jesus Christ told the story of a man who owed the king 10,000 talents. The king commanded that he and his family be sold in order to pay the debt. But the man asked for mercy and the king forgave him of the debt. The same man went out and saw someone that owed him a hundred pence. His debtor begged for a little more time to pay his debt, but the man refused to forgive the debtor and locked him in prison. The king heard about it and withdrew his mercy and gave the unmerciful servant to tormentors and proverbs eleven seventeen. proverbs eleven seventeen says the merciful man doeth good to his own soul but he that is cruel troubled his own flesh oh i was going to um i was going to say that um if you don't forgive somebody you are hurting yourself if you don't show mercy to somebody you are for, you're hurting yourself that person is living rent free in your mind, and I've heard that unforgiveness is actually connect, connected because when somebody when, when you bear grudge against somebody, even if the 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 the, the offense is genuine, it causes the cells to produce a very uh, harmful toxin that causes cancer, you know. And so we have to you have to forgive because forgiveness is dangerous. Forgiveness is for you. It's for you. You understand? It's for you. If you do not forgive, you will be made sick. Okay? Be me the merciful man doeth good to his own soul. So when we show mercy, we are actually doing good to our own soul. But he that is cruel troubleth his own flesh. Another thing is um, when you see somebody who has offended you and something bad happens to them, don't rejoice. Don't rejoice. Don't do it. Don't laugh. Don't laugh and say, hey, God, see, oh, see, oh, see, oh, see how God has rewarded the wicked. Hey, my eye has seen my desire upon my enemies. We must never rejoice at the downfall of others. The Bible says that if we rejoice when others have fallen, then God can see it and reverse the punishment and the judgment that he has meted on that person. Do you understand? The love of, all, of God in us does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. In Jesus' name. So, but when we show mercy, we are actually doing, it is actually saving us. It is good for our soul. You know, when you don't have any grudges against anybody. People that have grudges against people, they are always angry. So you can, that's why God, God sent us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that is helping us to walk in righteousness. So if you are struggling, because offenses are of different level. Offenses are of different level, you know. And you will need the Holy Spirit. If you are struggling with forgiving somebody, you know, or showing somebody mercy, then you need the Holy Spirit to help you. Ask, tell the Holy Spirit how it is, what has happened. Tomorrow we're going to be talking about friends of God. You must be able to, you must be able to talk to God just like a man speaks to his own friend. You know, I say, God, this is what happened. And we do not have a high priest who is not touched with the feeling of our infirmity. Report the matter to God and say, God, I'm struggling. This, I'm, I'm in pain. And God sees your pain. He's touched by the feelings of our infirmity. Someone may have broken your heart. I saw on social media. 
Um, a girl came on social media. You know how people bring their problems to social media? And her best friend started to date her fiance. This is her fiance that they were getting ready to get married. But that was not it because you know some people are wicked. Bible said, Jesus Christ said, Woe unto him through whom offenses come. And what happened was that this her best friend started to date her fiance. And the next thing she heard was that they were going to get married. But that was not the, the bad part. The bad part was, and the painful part was that, that her friend who was marrying her former fiance sent her uh, an email and said, Oh, I want you to be one of my chief bridesmaids. And that was like, you know, very, very terrible. So she was crying on social media. You know, um, we have God. So when those kind of things happen, we go to God, you know, and she was saying that, what should she do? What should she do? She was crying. Now in such a situation, what does God is, what, do, what is God saying? God says we must forgive and show mercy. Forgive and show mercy is what God requires of us. And that's very hard. And in that situation, you will need the Holy Spirit. Because he's the bam in Gilead and he's the healer of the broken hearted. I remember Dr. Lukoya told this story. He told the story about a woman who was going to get married. She was ready to get married. That's in, I don't know whether it was the wedding day or some days to the wedding. And then the husband, yeah, I think it was maybe the wedding day or something like that. The husband to be um, canceled the wedding. She was already in her wedding gown. She wasn't in her wedding gown or something like that. And canceled the wedding and chose to go and marry her, his girlfriends, his fiancés, chief bridesmaids, and they got married. And he left with the chief bridesmaid. And the, the woman was going to she, she, she you know the the the, the 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 mental, the emotional touch of she, you know, in fact her parents brought her to the man of God and she was saying, Oh Dr. Lukoya, let me die. <laughs> and Dr. Lukoya said to her, her pastor said, You won't die. You won't die. You you this too shall pass. You know, and he cancelled her. It happened. Real life story. Two weeks later, the man and the chief bridesmaid, husband and wife, they were traveling to somewhere and they had an accident and died. And so, you know, of course, look what I said to her, you see, that would have been you. you no, know, now that woman is married. <laughs> so that is said when he sees her, he says, ah, hey, Dr. Look, I let me die. You know, so, but, you know, um, so um, in everything, we give God thanks. All things work together for our good. Yes, all things. But you see, in that situation, as a born again Christian, God will not allow us to be tempted above that which we can bear. But in every temptation, He will make a way of escape. You must show mercy, you must forgive. The scripture above says that when we are merciful, we are doing good to ourselves. But if you are cruel, you are hurting yourself because your cruelty will only rob you of the mercies of God. You know, so that is saying that if, if you don't show mercy, God, God is. Legally bound to withhold his mercy from us, just like he did. So this parable is a is a, an earthly story with a heavenly meaning, meaning that if God shows us mercy, forgives our transgressions, and we do not forgive others their trespasses against us, God has the legal right to withhold his mercy from us. In John 14, 23, Jesus said, If you love him, his father will love you, and both of them will come and dwell in you. How do you show God that you love him? In 1 John 4, 21, he says that if you love God, then you must love your brother. Love your neighbor like yourself because you cannot say you love God and hate your neighbor. Hmm. If you decide not to love your neighbor, you are telling God that you don't need his love. Okay. So God is saying, that is teaching us that God is love. And you know, the shaman says that we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength. And we should love our neighbor as ourselves. The Bible says that the love of God, it worketh no evil to his neighbor. You know, so if, uh, and Jesus Christ said, uh, if you, that if we love him, that he and his father will come and make their abode in us and he will manifest himself in us. You know, so, and how do we show God that we love him? By doing his commandments and by loving our neighbor. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, our light must shine. You can't, you see, if, if you misbehave, eh, you can't even minister the gospel to others because they'll be like you get out of here you are a christian do you understand and that is not one thing that some it must never be said of us by the grace of god it should never be said of us that if this is christianity i don't want it no no that's not our portion because we have the excellent spirit within us we must be do you understand we must just Christ, our light should so shine may god help us to show 
mercy. So we must, that is saying that um, we must, if we love God, we cannot hate our neighbor. Do you understand? We cannot hate our neighbor. Of course, we, there must be boundaries. But the love of God in us, it walketh no ill to his neighbor in the name of Jesus Christ. The love of God will not say, walk at no ill to our neighbor. And if our neighbor is misbehaving and we tell them one, we tell them to, we take the matter to God and say, Lord, look, see, Lord, see and judge. You know that kind of thing. Yeah. So if we don't decide not to love our neighbor, we are telling God that we don't need his love. And that's in Galatians 6, 7, it says that be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, he will also reap. So if we sow mercy, we will reap mercy. Whatever you sow is what you reap. If you sow mercy into the lives of others, you will reap mercy. However, if you decide to sow unforgiveness, then do not complain when you reap unforgiveness. And that's in Job 4, 8. Praise God. Job 4, 8. Let's see what Job 4, 8 says. Job, the book of Job is just before Psalms. And I want to see what he's saying there. I want to share that. Praise the Lord. So, Job, so. You see, if we don't, sh whatsoever a man sows, that also shall he reap. Job 4, 8 says, Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. Hmm. Even as I have seen, that they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness shall reap the same. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that he will also reap. So if we decide to sow unforgiveness, then do not complain when you reap unforgiveness. Praise the Lord. So the action point is be merciful to everyone. Amen. May God help us to be merciful in Jesus' name. We, you know what? God will not tell us to do what um, he has not enabled us to do. If we are born again, we have the spirit of mercy inside us. We have the spirit of the Lord in us. And even when you do something wrong, the Holy Spirit will say, nah, don't do that. Don't do that. You know? And um, we have the ability to, to forgive like God. Amen. We have to work on it till we get to the stage where there's no offense that anybody would met out to us that would, that would ruffle our feathers. In other words, you know, we, we're not moved by those kind of things. We know that all things work together for our good because we love God and because we are the called according to his purpose. And I remember a man of God said, when somebody offends us, we should learn to report to God. Report to God so that He, the Bible, He said, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. So don't be deceived. Jesus Christ our Lord said, Woe unto Him through whom offenses come. So, yes, we are going to show mercy because we are born again and we have the Holy Spirit and we want and we walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. But woe unto Him through whom offenses come. It would be better if a millstone had been put around His neck and He'd be cast into the sea than that He should trouble one of these little ones. Okay, so don't think that because God has said we should forgive that you can be messing around. We report you to the Lord and God will deal with you. Amen. So, but we show mercy. Be merciful to everyone in Jesus' name. We forgive those who trespass against us as God has forgiven us. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Almighty God. We thank you for your word. Thank you because your word is a lamp, lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. The entrance of your word indeed gives us light and gives understanding to the simple. Father, we thank you, Almighty God. Thank you for showing us mercy. And we ask, Almighty God, for grace to show others mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us to forgive others their trespasses as you have forgiven us our trespasses in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And help us not to deal with others according to their sins, Almighty God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We ask, we ask for grace to be merciful. And we will, in the name of Jesus, we release all those who have offended us. We release them into the, the beauty of our forgiveness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We receive grace to show mercy just like God, that men may know that these are indeed the children of the living God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you for taking time to listen to me. I hope this blessed you. I'm sure it did. Don't forget to like, comment, and share, and subscribe on my YouTube channel, even if you see me on Facebook, and God bless you as you do. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. My name is Sister Tenita. You have a beautiful day. There is no